Good evening and welcome to the CUNE Academy for this installment of AP Government, where we're going to talk uh, campaign ads and propaganda techniques. All right, what you heard there was one of the most famous, if not the most famous, political ad in history called the Daisy Girl. That's going to be one of your note cards for Chapter 14. Um, but uh, you're going to do something with that in class um, with the uh, exercises today. Okay, um, so we talked about uh, political ads. They are a main contributor to what we call candidate-centered political campaigns. This, as you recall, is one of the factors leading to the decrease or decline of parties because people are focusing less on the parties and the issues and more on the candidates themselves. Okay, and TV ads are a main contributor. Okay, um, basically the media and the candidates themselves have contributed to the. Um, to the candidate-centered campaigns, all right? Um, from the media standpoint, um, they've made it all about the candidates by covering their backgrounds, all right? The talk shows and the debates, which we'll start talking about Friday and hopefully get into another topic. Um, and then when they report the polls, sorry, that should say polls, they're not roles, okay? Um, as well as horse race journalism, um, sound bites, coverage of the conventions, um, investigative reporting in the scandals and focusing on the gaffes of the candidates or the mistakes, like writing roles instead of polls would be a gaffe. Um, and then the candidates contribute to the candidate-centered campaigns through negative commercials, public attention getting, seeking contributions, running positive ads, which we'll talk about in a second, appearing on talk shows when they look at the debates and just focusing on their appearance, the sound bites that they try to create themselves, and they're using the internet uh, to spread information. Okay, so hopefully you can pause the video and write this list down if you like, uh, but we're going to move on. Okay, when you're looking at the ads today, you're going to go to the website livingroomcandidate.com and you're going to look at uh, a series of ads over time from 1952 to the present. I have some recommended ones and then the rest you can kind of choose on your own, whatever kind of interests you. All right, but make sure they're from different elections and different candidates. Okay, um, but if we get into types of ads, all right, there's four basic types. One is a biographical ad where the candidate will just try and get their name out, try and work on name recognition, okay? Uh, there's really no substance to it. Just talk about how the guy's a veteran or the guy's a family man, okay? Got a college degree. All these things, uh, challengers will do this just to get some attention to themselves in the congressional races, but not a lot of substance to it. You just want people to know who you are. Okay, and most people have positive backgrounds, therefore that's what they want to cover. All right, positive ads are used by incumbents, and this states their positions, do a lot of credit claiming, and usually will just say nothing but good things that they've done. Now you'll notice in a lot of ads today, they're, they legally have to have the phrase, I'm so and so and I approve this message. If it's a positive ad, you want to put that at the end of the message. So that way, after you hear all these positive, great things that Brad Schneider's done, then you'll say, and Brad Schneider and I approve this message, so it stays uh, on the positive side of things. On negative ads, you want to run it beforehand so you don't associate the candidate with the negativity that the ad proclaims. Okay? A contrast ad, this is pretty common, is where you state the candidate's position on the issues and compare them to their opponent. Okay, um, and it usually asks voters to make a choice and shows bias toward the sponsor. So George Bush stands for this, Al Gore stands for that, vote for Al Gore. Okay, so you're contrasting their positions with things. Uh, and then finally, a negative ad is just what it says, a negative ad. Challengers will usually use these. Um, incumbents don't want to go negative unless they have to, meaning they're trailing in the polls. But if you're winning, you stay on the positive and, um, and take the high road, if you will. Okay? You point out the flaws of the candidates. You try and use propaganda, which I'm going to show you next, to distort the truth. All right? Campaign finance laws do not allow independent groups to run ads saying vote for or against someone. So the independent groups find these negative ads to be most effective because uh, by law, if you run an ad saying vote for someone, then that's um, a coordinated ex expense with the campaign, and that's illegal. You can only run ads independent that just inform the voters. That's your right to free speech. So I can inform you that Robert Dole is a member of the Tea Party, but I can't say to vote against him. So because of the campaign finance laws limiting how much money I can give Brad Schneider, I'm just going to run these negative ads on my own, and that's why we've seen so much negativity in the last 10 years. All right, now we get into propaganda techniques. This is what's mentioned in uh, Magruder's American Government Textbook, which is the basically the Bible of regular government textbooks. I doubt you'll see these terms on the AP exam, but I want you to be familiar with them and uh, apply them to the ads you're going to watch on TV, as well as the ads you're going to use for your election project. Okay? So these are techniques. So before it was the types of ads, these are the techniques that are used. Okay? A glittering generality is a broad and a vague statement. Doesn't really say a whole lot, okay? In the interest of peace and prosperity, 
know, patriotism and freedom in the good old USA. Um, you're just trying to say something really general about somebody, um, try and have it be catchy, have it be positive, but not really say much but say the basics, okay? He's a tax cutter. Well, what does that mean, okay? Um, but you're just going to make a broad statement to try and get people's attention, okay? Inspiration and liberty for all would be another uh, glittering generality, okay? Plain folks ads. You'll see these especially with Jimmy Carter if you look at any ads from 1976. You tend to be one of the common people, okay? So you're going to see guys with their sleeves rolled up. You're going to see guys sitting on... Uh, front porches, all right, sitting in classrooms. You want to be a common man. I'm, I'm the worker's friend. You know, there's George Bush wearing a, a cowboy hat, okay? Um, he's a plain, full, common kind of guy, all right? Repetition is another type of propaganda technique. You just keep repeating it because you've heard it so often that you're going to get people to believe it. So you want to get these phrases to stick. A flip-flopper, okay, um, is one. Uh, a liberal, Try and stick that label on somebody. You just try and continue to say it over and over again. Uh, reckless. Uh, Melissa Bean ran some ads against Joe Walsh using the phrase reckless. And you say it so often, you get people to believe it. Okay? Bandwagon ads. This is where you want people to follow the crowd, be with the majority. Okay? I'm voting for you. Okay? So some, everybody else should too. Okay? Um, so you usually go around and have a bunch of different people on TV saying, I'm voting for Barack Obama because blah, blah, blah. And that's getting people to jump on the bandwagon, okay, and show just common people saying they like them and other people following suit, okay, see Hillary, they're kind of getting people on the bandwagon, okay. Name calling, all right, is where you don't discuss the facts, you just want to give the opposition a bad name, okay, as I told you, liberals become a bad word in politics because Republicans have used it very effective against Democrats, so Democrats will never call themselves that anymore because it's been seen as such a bad word in politics that's synonymous with tax raising, okay? Um, but uh, the 2004 ad, you'll see John Kerry on a windsurf, and that's considered um, name-calling because they just wanted to call him a flip-flopper and get that name to stick using it over and over again, all right? Uh, transfer ad. These are a little more complicated. This is where you use symbols to accomplish some purpose other than their original meaning. So they're almost subliminally trying to get the person to think differently um, about the person using that image. So uh, there's a 1984 Ronald Reagan ad you're going to watch with a bear in the woods, all right? And you'll have to ask the communists in the room what that bear symbolizes to um, really have that ad makes Any Republican ad is going to have Lincoln on there, okay, for example, because I want you to think, hey, Lincoln's a Republican. I should vote Republican. You know, it's not always the case, okay? Uh, testimonial ad, okay? Uh, it's usually endorsed by a celebrity, all right? Uh, I'm Oprah, I'm voting for Barack Obama, you should too. Because a lot of people don't know the politicians, but they certainly know the celebrities, okay? Bruce Springsteen campaigned for John Kerry, for example. Oprah with Barack Obama, okay? George Bush had athletes campaigning with him. He just trying to get people to support him that way. And then our final propaganda technique is card stacking. This is where you present one side of an issue and totally distort the truth and juggle the facts, okay? No cam candidate's going to say 2 plus 2 is 22, so that's kind of a bad example. But you just sort of give uh, a distortion of the facts. You spin them in your direction. It's totally not true, but you convince people it's possible uh, to do that. Sometimes that's for, in positive ways. Other times that's negative ways. The Daisy Girl ad is card stacking. I want to see if you can figure out how that is when you watch that one. All right? So thank you for listening to the CUNE Academy, where we are building responsible voters one video at a time. Sorry I'm not going to be with, with you in class today. Uh, email me if you have any questions. And um, enjoy watching the, uh, the ads from the Living Room Candidate. I will collect those um, whenever you're finished.